Welcome back class, I'm Mr. Teacher with the SAT Math Video Guide and uh, today we will be starting on section 5 of test number 3 and I have realized that I have been going a little bit too fast in my explaining so this time I will try to slow it down a little bit because I know that speeding things up isn't really gonna help it at all so Today, as I just said, we'll do section 5 of test number 3, as we have just finished section number 2 of, uh, I was about to say a couple days ago, actually we just finished it yesterday, so we will begin on number 1, so let's, let's start. Number 1 says, Fred, Norman, and Dave own a total of 128 comic books. If Dave owns 44 of them, what is the average number of comic books owned by Fred and Norman? So, let's subtract the amount of da books, con uh, <laughs> tongue twister, let's subtract the amount of books Dave has from the total number of books. So, the total number of books is 128. The number of books Dave has is 44. So, if we subtract Dave's number of books from the total, we will get... 4, 12 minus 4 is 84. So now we need this 84 is equal to the amount of books owned by Fred plus Norman. The total of both of these buddies' books equal to 84. So now we need to find the average. So the average is going to be divided by 2. Reason being, there are two people that make up this 84 number of books. So 84 divided by 2 is just 42 and that is the average that is choice A that is the correct answer now we'll go to number 2 and it's a diagram really early on uh, draw it like so and just enough space for an origin marking like so x-axis, y-axis, and a circle. Uh, no, it actually touches the other point. Okay, looks like that. And this point right here is 6, 0. And this point right here is uh, P. Well, the y value at least is p so the um uh, i forgot to say the the way i drew this uh circle touches the line like in a long area but uh in the picture it just touches the line on one point so those are the points so in the xy in the xy coordinate system above the circle is tangent to the x axis and the y axis what are the coordinates of point p so, the uh, they just said the circle is tangent to each axis at one point only. So, to find the value of P, we need to remember um, a vital rule about circles is that circles are always symmetrical, no, no, no matter what. So, if you divide this like this, this part is equal to this part. If you divide it again like so, this part is equal to this part, which is equal to this part, which is equal to this part. So you you get what I'm get, uh, going at here. So if this is tangent at both axes, and since we know the axes are perpendicular, and that the point here is 6 and 0, the x value is 6. Uh, that's not a correct 6. But anyways, the x value is 6 here. So over here, we know that the x value is 0. But how about the y value? Y value. So, if the x value is six in this area, where the circle extends to about somewhere further around the origin, if it's six here, since the circle is symmetrical, the y value over here at point P will also be six, because that's how a circle works. A circle is always symmetrical, and especially if you have perpendicular lines conveniently placed for you to measure them. So. That is choice B. And we'll now go to number three. 
And let me turn the page here. Uh, okay, so a hotel charges a service fee of a dollar per day to use its copy machine. In addition, there is a charge of 10 cents per copy made. Which of the following represents the total charge in dollars to use this copy machine to make n copies in one day? Okay, so so it says that each copy made is 10 cents. 10 cents. So the the cost needed to make n copies is going to be 0 0.10 dollars or just 10 cents times n so 0 0.10 dollar n however we're not done yet the reason being that there is also a one dollar extra charge that doesn't have anything to do with this equation so you need to add another dollar one so in one day if you go to the copying machine you will pay one dollar to actually start using the machine and for instance for instance if you had 10 pages you would pay 10 cents times 10 which is a dollar more so that's how this uh, FedEx office is working so that's choice D choice D is 1.0 plus 0 0.10 and they just didn't use the dollar signs we use the dollar signs so now we'll move on to number four right here and there are sets of variables there's a a there's a b there is a c there's b c there's a a and there's b a okay kind of strange amount of numbers so in the six pairs of letters shown above if a is paired with itself the pair has a value of two if A appears in a pair with another letter, that pair has a value of 1. All other pairs have a value of 0. So what is the sum of the values of these pairs? So we know that A plus A is going to be equal to 2. A plus, oh, no. A plus B or C will be equal to 1. And B or C plus B or C is going to be equal to zero. So in our pairs that are specified in the problem, the first pair is A and A. So A plus A is equal to two. The second pair is A and B, which satisfies this part right here. So that is equal to one. A and C satisfies the same equation. So it's equal to one. BC doesn't have any A's in it at all, like this one, so it's equal to 0. A is paired with itself in this one, so it's equal to 2 again. And BA is just another way to write AB, as we can see, so it's also equal to 1. So the value of the total value of the value of the pairs is 2 plus 2 plus 1 plus 1 plus 1 which is 4 plus 3, which is equal to 7, which is choice B. Okay, so I'll do just one more problem before I go and start making the next video because I do do these in session. So there's a square here. Assume that's a square because I am not the best artist here. I'm sure... College board would never hire me to draw their pictures as horrible as they are anyways. They're not horrible, they're just uh, a bit too simple, a bit bareback, if you must say. This is equal to 4. Okay, so what is the area of square ABCD above? So if it's a square, this is a right angle, this is a right angle. And the other ones are right angles as well because they are opposite angles and that's one of the rules of a quadrilateral which we will go over once we start on geometry so line AC is equal to 4 now if you notice carefully the line AC is bisecting this 90 degree angle so that's equal to 45 degrees so since there's a 90 degree here this one is also equal to 45 degrees so you see I'm gonna highlight this in uh, in blue now there you can cut out a separate triangle from this square 
like so. So now we know that we have a 45, 45, 90 triangle and the hypotenuse is equal to 4. So the legs are going to be equal to x. Now what, what I meant by x is that if the legs are x in a 45, 45, 90 triangle, the hypotenuse is equal to x root 2. Therefore, we know that 4 is equal to x root 2. So, the easiest way to figure this out is really once you get, get the hang of these problems, it's pretty easy to figure out. So, what you need to do is you take this square, and in, in your mental mind, you remove the square root. So, it's just equal to 4 is equal to... Actually, no, we, we don't need to write out the equation. So, you then divide that 2 and that empty 2, that uh, the 4 by that empty 2. So, you will get 2. So, now you plug in this 2 into this x. So, you will get 2 root 2. Now, the apparent so the x value is 2 root 2 not this root as well the second part of the root so when you multiply another root 2 it root 2 times root 2 is just 2 which so it's 2 times 2 which is equal to 4 so it's true the the lines are equal to 2 root 2 and i will explain this as i said in another video once we get to geometry it will actually get easier cuz we will be focusing on that so now we need to find the area of the square. So that's just 2 root 2 whole square. Well, if you square 2, you get 4. If you square root 2, you get 2. So that is equal to 8. And that's choice A. So I'm going to leave it at there for now. And I will start making another one very promptly, if that's the correct word. Uh, as you know, we are doing a marathon now since I am back in winter vacation. So I hope this helped you with your SAT preparation, and I will see you in the next video. I just did a fist pump that you guys didn't see. But anyway, see you soon.